What's up, X and YouTube? Matt A here. Today, we're going to talk about, well, I'm wearing green, so you probably can guess Microsoft and Xbox. So recently, Phil Spencer had, you know, an interview, and he's talking about what he normally does, which is making Xbox, Xbox games multi-platform. Now, this isn't new. He's been saying this for a while, but this is coming up again because of Indiana Jones. So if you didn't notice during Gamescom, Indiana Jones is coming out for all platforms, which is good. And I don't think this is going to prevent Xbox from not selling consoles. I don't think this is going to be a Sega, Sega Dreamcast type of thing. Okay. It's not, it's not that bad. It's not a, like a Sega Dreamcast type of thing. And I'll, I'll explain why in a second. But let's go listen to what he said. And then we'll get our, we'll go from there. We'll have our basis. We'll go from there, right? Let's go listen to what he says. Going to the PlayStation announcement, obviously last spring, we launched four games, two of them on the Switch, four of them on PlayStation. And we said, we're going to learn. We said we'd watch, and I think at Showcase, this I might have said, from our learning, we're going to do more. Mm -hmm. What I see when I look is our franchises our are getting stronger. Our Xbox yeah. console yeah. players yeah. are as high this year as they've ever been. Amazing. So I look at it and I say, okay, our player numbers are going up for the console platform. Mm -hmm. Our franchises are as strong as they've ever been. And we run a business. Mm -hmm. Like, it's definitely true inside of Microsoft. The bar is high for us in terms of the delivery that we have to give back to the company because we get a level of support from the company that's just amazing in what we're able to go do. So I look at this, how can we make our games as strong as possible? Our platform continues to grow both on console, on PC, and on cloud. And I think it's just gonna be a strategy that works for us. And the last thing I'll probably say is I think as an industry right now, there's, like, there's a lot of pressure on the industry. It's been growing for a long time and now people are looking for ways to grow. And I think that us as fans, as players of games, we just have to anticipate there's going to be more change in how some of the traditional ways that games were built and distributed. That's going to change. That's going to change for all of us. But the end result has to be better games that more people can play. If we're not focused on that, I think we're focused on the wrong things. So for us, it's Xbox, health of Xbox, yep. health of our platform and our growing games, most important things. So you've seen that, you heard that. And like I said, that's nothing new. But let me tell you why I don't think it's going to kill their hardware, their console sales. I don't. I don't think Microsoft is Microsoft is losing any money off console sales, to my knowledge. And as long as they're not losing any money, they're going to keep making consoles, at least for this next generation. I think after that, they might switch, but I think there's going to be an Xbox too. I really do. And by the way, side note, I think part of, I think part of the problem with, with Xbox is the naming. The naming is just, it's too much Xbox One. Xbox Series X, Xbox Box Series S. The naming was horrible, okay? That's just a side note, right? I don't think it's going to, I don't think they're going to stop console sales. Why? Because you guys probably know, in business, you know, there's a term, it's called brand equity, right? And brand equity is how much your brand is worth, your perceived value, and most of the time it's intrinsic, right? It's not really tangible value. Them Xbox continuing to make consoles continues to build on their brand equity. In other words, we could see what happened to Sega. If they stop making consoles, it's going to hurt their brand equity. Though they might not may not see see much financial gain from the consoles, they're making up for it in brand equity, right? They're increasing their intrinsic value. They are increasing it. So while their sales are behind, you know, PS5, their sales are behind the Switch. That doesn't mean they should stop making them because it can contribute to their brand equity. And that's important in the corporate world. That's important in business. You know, that adds strength to Microsoft. And not only does it increase Xbox's brand equity, it increases the whole company's brand equity, right? Because Xbox is a huge part. Imagine if they stopped making consoles. How, how bad would that look? 
That would look bad to investors, so I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think they're going to stop making consoles here, okay? I really don't. Now, as far as the future goes, I don't know what games are going to be multi-platform for for, from them, but I can guess most games are going to be multi-platform. And if I could take a wild guess, I would say that, you know, the next gen Xbox two, all of those games that Microsoft releases next gen will be multi-platform. And their main bread and butter is going to be games pass. I see what they're doing here. Now games pass is great. They need to improve the quality on PC of game pass, obviously, but game pass is going to be their cash cow. In business, cash cow is what makes you money, so you can do other things like marketing and, and have brand equity and build brand equity. So they want Games Pass to be their cash cow. Now, when you have a cash cow, you have a lot of flexibility to do different things, right? And with this is great because they want to open the avenue to all gamers. Doom's going to be on multiple flat platforms. You know, uh, all of their other games probably going to be multiple platform going forward, maybe even till the next generation. Indiana Jones is. Now, will Halo, Fable, Starfield come to PlayStation? I don't think they will in this generation. I think next generation. So I can bet the next Fallout game is probably going to be multi-platform. I don't think Bethesda wants to cut all those people off. I don't think Xbox does anyway. That's a whole lot of millions and millions of copies, at least an extra 5 million, right? They're not going to cut off Elder Scrolls 6. They're definitely not. I can promise you because that's going to be 10 million copies minimum. So we're talking Elder Scrolls 6 is probably going to sell 20 plus million copies within the first like couple of weeks, the first month, right? Almost as big as GTA 6. Not quite, but it's up there. They're not going to cut half that market off, right? Or, or I don't know, 40% of whatever, whatever share that PlayStation 5 has. They're not going to cut off 40% of the market or whatever PlayStation has. They're not going to cut that off, right? So going forward, I could see most games being multi-platform. I get with what Phil Spencer is saying. And as an Xbox fan, I mostly play on PC anyway. I don't see it being a problem. Now, with their sixth generation or Xbox three, the next generation after Xbox two, they might not do hardware anymore because everything's going to be streaming. We're probably going to have more cloud gaming and their bread and butter is going to be Game Pass. So you might see that you might see in the future. OK, not just this this generation, but the next one, you might see that. Just Xbox Games Pass. And if I was Microsoft, this is what I would do, all right? I would create Xbox branded graphics cards and I would develop my own graphics cards. I know that's hard to do, but basically it would turn any computer into an Xbox, right? That's what I would do. I would start our, I would start the R&D or buy AMD. They could buy AMD. I would start the R&D for that or buy AMD and improve the cards with their, you know, they have more money to invest into that. Because if you have Xbox, uh, you know, graphics cards, that'll completely revolutionize the industry. And that will bridge the gap between, you know, console and, and PC, because that's already kind of what it's like. And what would the Xbox card look like? Well, you know, it would have the Xbox X, the aesthetics, and it would have to have extra technology that you couldn't get somewhere else, right? It'd have to have some kind of unique architecture, but that, that would be my suggestion. If anybody from Xbox is watching this, okay, that would be my suggestion. Start the R and D or buy part of a, buy the, the AM, buy the Radeon section of AMD, buy that part from AMD, not the processes, but buy, buy the, uh, the GPU part of AMD and start making the Xbox GPUs. That's what I would do. You would sell more PCs. You would keep the, the Xbox, you know, brand alive and you're still making hardware. You're just making it for PCs that could be upgraded over and over and over again. 
if I was them, I would also invest into SSDs and come out with some really, really high capacity SSDs or the new one with Helium or whatever they have. So if I was Microsoft, I would put this R&D into future hardware. I would probably ditch the console for the GPU, the, the, the storage, maybe even RAM. I would start getting into that territory if I was Xbox and branding that. It's kind of like Apple does, right? What if you had Xbox RAM and Xbox GPU and it was integrated together, right? That would be cool because you have that integration. It's efficient specifically for playing games. You have the RAM integrated with the Xbox graphics integrated with the Xbox SSD. It is better uh, quality control and computers have less, less issues and you can compete with Apple better. You can compete with PlayStation 5 better because I guarantee that will enhance the market share of Microsoft. I guarantee that they will sell more computers that way, more gaming specific computers doing it that way. Those are my opinions on that. I think it's a good thing. I don't think Xbox is going to stop making hardware, like I said. My suggestion would be to invest into computer parts, make them integrated like Apple has done, or maybe buy AM or maybe buy that uh, part of AMD, you know, Radeon, the Radeon branding, and then reinvest in it R&D and make it Xbox. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. No one's really talking about this. I think I might be the first one to talk about this. Let me know if you watch the video to the end. Go ahead and subscribe, subscribe and like. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.